your talk? Yeah. Okay. So Jan unfortunately couldn't make it. He had a conflicting uh, set of appointments and he asked me to deliver his uh, presentation. I'm not the top expert, but I think I uh, understand enough uh, of the topic and the subject to be able to do him justice. Well, the product uh, and company name and product is uh, CostFact. And CostFact uh, is a piece of software that wants to help estimating and tracking software. It is a database-based uh, system, has a relational uh, database, and uh, with that it has uh, open hooks and open possibilities to connect. Connect and integrate to other systems. Today they have it uh, uh, working in a couple of uh, very large uh, German shipyards where it's connected uh, to SAP, for example, but of course we have a connector to a ship constructor as well. And um, we'll see how it works. The first part to talk about is the estimation part. And there are various parameters to, t to be taken into account to during the estimation. Some of them are objective and some of them are subjective. Objective is how many tons of steel. Subjective is how good is my crew, what is the capacity of the shipyard, what are the means that I have available, and so on and so forth. And these are all quantified and they're parameters in an estimating uh, equation, which then give you, of course, uh, the cost. And then uh, you can add uh, individual cost items, like things which you shall purchase, or maybe a relational cost item, which is going to be something like uh, uh, the consumables uh, for welding, depending on the welding length. One of the problems that it wants to solve, like uh, most estimating systems, is the lack of information in early project stages. And also the ability to bring together different teams that will interact, interoperate, which, of course, then takes the planning into the equation as well. It addresses, of course, uh, all of the sides and aspects uh, of a ship and a shipyard. It is, uh, again, uh, a, uh, a breakdown structure, like a weight breakdown structure, like a cost breakdown structure. And the breakdown structure is arbitrary. It comes uh, with a standard breakdown structure, which is the NATO one, that is very commonly used uh, in other disciplines as well, like weight, for example. But, of course, you can then create uh, your own uh, breakdown structure. And the interest here in, in detailing it is that you want to have as many people who are at the head of those, let's say, departments contribute their own information. Because, yes, you can do a cost estimation at the ship level based on a previous ship. This is a bit bigger. This is a bit smaller. We estimate that it will have a, a bit more systems. But, in truth, that is always quite difficult. And particularly in recent uh, times, I certainly have been witness uh, to a couple of uh, big disasters which came from thinking that the current ship uh, would be more or less the same as the last ship. And then in the space of three years, that particular type of ship now includes about, again, the same amount of equipment in it. Oops, we didn't calculate that. Not just in the cost, but in the space allocation for the equipment in the pipes that I have to run, in the wires, in, in the ventilation that I have to use to cool down my electrical rooms. And therefore, the structure was designed according to more or less the last project. And then when it came to putting the systems in, because they were not doing coordinated uh, design, they ran out of space, et cetera, et cetera. So the interesting part is in all of these estimation uh, software, the ability for all the experts to co cooperate and contribute from the very early stages. And uh, Runer will actually go into more detail about this uh, with uh, ship weight, but the concept is very much similar. And so, for example, to tie ship weight to a uh, cost fact is an absolute given, as it is to tie Express Marine, Napa Steel, ship constructor to cost fact, because we're all producing original data that is then quantified into time and in, uh, in money. The um, historical Ships, something that we find again, so you can not limit yourself to a single ship, but you can use the different uh, historical sources to go and uh, estimate your cost parameters. The diversification of the project is also quite important, and uh, again, Runa will give us a, a, very, uh, a very good insight of this uh, with Shipway, but when you go to groups, you can now mix and match different projects. You're not necessarily stuck to saying, oh, I have to estimate from that one parent model. No, you can 
take bits and pieces from uh, different models. And uh, this, this testimonial is quite, uh, this is, by the way, one of the companies that use uh, COSFA, is quite, a, uh, is, is quite clear in uh, how this all works. The same is true for products like uh, the Express Marine that you have seen, particularly when you combine it with Chip Constructor to do things in parallel like we will see tomorrow. You have regression analysis, you have the ability to calculate uh, quantities, and, uh, and therefore there is always uh, the human control factor. This is not a magic tool, it's not a black box that you ask it the question, it gives you the answer like the magicians of uh, the Middle Ages. So you are still in control, it's a man-controlled uh, process, which is very, very important, and you can go back and uh, make your changes once you decide that perhaps your data was not so close. So, this introduces the concept of estimation and counting. Estimation is when you don't know exactly how much to count, and counting is when you start to have individual items, individual components uh, in your model. And therefore, we've been saying this for two days now, the model is not just this model. The model is made of data and input from many different sources. You know, one thing could be, oh, this supplier has now a six-month uh, backlog, and I have to buy from the other supplier, but it costs twice as much. Nothing to do with the, what you're actually purchasing. It's a contingency factor that increases the cost, and your estimation goes to hell. So if you didn't know that you needed to buy whatever you have to buy early enough, and therefore you do this future purchasing sort of thing, then you uh, better go back and um, correct your model. But the regression analysis is always a very, very good way to begin, and you don't need to have dozens of projects because, like with ship weight, it works in groups. So you can take examples from uh, different sources. This is what uh, the, uh, the main screen uh, looks like, where you have uh, your zones. In this case, it's a propulsion unit. It's just a group of parts. Arbitrary, this is done on the, on the NATO Swibis, I think. And then for each group, you have uh, distinct information. So this is available to everybody, but of course, there is also an export to uh, Excel, for example, if you want to visualize it in Excel, as you export to TSV, et cetera, et cetera, you go into your uh, uh, Power Business Intelligence, Power BI, that Lambertus uh, has told us so much about, which means that now I can also run my Power BI from different sources. I'm not limited to my ship constructor model, I can actually combine it from Shipwave, from Cosfact, from Express Marine, from Napa Steel, from all of these different sources, and now I'm beginning to get a much bigger picture. Lambertus were showing us the use of Power BI at a stage where, in my previous presentation, we're now industrializing the, the product, but there's also a phase before that and parallel phases to that. The differences uh, in how you do your estimations are relatively known, which are, one is uh, the uh, Analogy, you do uh, like a scaling like we do in, uh, in naval architecture. Uh, in the old days, how you calculate the resistance of the ship? Well, you applied a, a cubic factor to your volume and you divided it by, I forget what it was exactly, and you got the new propulsion power. You can do a parametric approach, which is a regression analysis, and then you can do an engineering approach where it's the bottom up means they start counting. So the minute they start putting things in my ship constructor model, I can start counting. And the minute they start counting, I very quickly see, get a feeling for, and this is the human side, the convergence between my estimation and my count. Now I think I have already 90% of the bathroom units in my ship, but I am only 50% of my estimated weight of bathrooms. Is that correct? Is that wrong? What's wrong? Is it my bathroom that is wrong, or is it the estimation that is wrong? And therefore, it's not an answer to the question, but it's a question that needs an answer, and the beauty of these systems back to the enterprise platform, uh, is to be able to convey this information at the very same time that information is available to the consumer that needs to make a decision. The um, idea of information control is something we have been talking about all the time. I would say more monitoring than uh, control, but it's uh, the same thing. The statistical anal analysis here wants to be really a, as we go analysis of our cost uh, project, our cost model, but who changed what and when is very, is very, very crucial. And uh, this is pioneered uh, by uh, systems like uh, Shipweight, where we have a down to the cell control of who's done what, when, and therefore you can always go back to a moment in time and not just see who's done it, 
but also see what it was before it happened. And then in Shipway, we'll find things like the playground area, which allows you to do what if uh, analysis, should I import this data, what's going to happen to the project. But the <clears throat> reliability and the perspective deviations are the key. You want to know that what you have <coughs> is true, what you have is correct. You know, like uh, Runer taught me many years ago, it's better to be 100% sure of 80% of the weight than 80% sure of 100% of the weight. If you see where that goes, it's pretty straightforward. So the possibility to investigate the nature of your data and to investigate your model, your cost model in this respect, is there and very, very important. And the spreadsheets are definitely everybody's uh, nemesis. It's almost instinctive to go make an, a spreadsheet in Excel. I have to do a little calculation, and then I put a formula, then I, I link another sheet, and then all of a sudden I have this mess, like in the previous presentation, and you don't even know where the hell you're going because you forgot exactly where it is pointing, and then you spend hours trying to figure it out and try to map out your Excel spreadsheet. But this is the power of relational databases that do not have that problem and in which, in which you can actually set up uh, your methods and, and your calculations and your exports. And all you need to worry about is that you're putting data which is reliable. And in some systems, you also have the ability to check and double check and triple check that you haven't put your antenna 100 meters in front of the ship or your engine 20 meters below the ship and your VCG is all wrong. And then, of course, you involve in the cost prediction and in the cost analysis, you involve uh, the different players. And the different players would be your team, the suppliers, the manufacturers, including what it comes with, the different supply chains, and so on and so forth. But the, the, the idea of an, an impartial cost evaluation, of course, in the beginning, it may not be uh, impartial because there is always a subjective number when you put in your first estimation. But because you can use parametric estimation based on your historical data, now you become more and more impartial, and it is easier and easier to find where the errors were, particularly if you do your job correctly and always do a post-mortem or a forensic analysis of your projects. This is another one of the customers of uh, Cosfact. And the different alternative ship designs, in this case from a cost standpoint, a classic, uh, am I going to use MTU, am I going to use Caterpillar, am I going to use somebody else to, for my engine room? It's not just the cost of the engine, it's the cost of the engine room. And the cost of the engine room is not how much you pay the supplier, it's how much it will have cost to the shipyard to actually put it in at the end. Connectivity is uh, very straightforward, like uh, in relation to databases, so we have quite a bit of experience uh, in there. And uh, it works either through direct uh, API connection, like we do with Ship Constructor, or through uh, intermediate files, like we also do uh, in Ship Constructor, and uh, another shipyard. And uh, the, the way we're working with, uh, with Jan is that we're actually creating a, let's call it a template benchmark pilot, whatever you want to call it, but which is an out of the box integration between the two systems. So if you think about it that way, in the training project that we all have, there would be a, uh, an operation using enterprise platform that publishes the cost fact uh, interface data. How do we go with Ship Constructor? Well, we use uh, a breakdown system. This is our product hierarchies, all of the different disciplines. The cost drivers are going to be the, uh, the different uh, quantities but we have complete track of all the details and the parametric calculation and recalculation. Uh, difference in culture, this is more like a normal design. It's not the engineering for production process. So that's where it all takes place. In the relationship, so we actually have a, uh, a Swibis that we, that we do with Shipway. We create the product hierarchy inside our ship constructor and we add items to that. Some things go indirect, the in, are indirect, like the length of the steel plate edges. So this is the welding. We have a weld uh, uh, information module, which is uh, more detailed than just the length of the steel plate edges. And then again, we are going to break it down from a top level, which is the complete ship, down to the first level groups, sub-level groups, and down to the items. These levels are arbitrary. You can have as much as you want. Typically, you will see that Second, third level is where you stop uh, your estimation and then you go into itemization. But you can do the top down and the bottom up at the same time. These are populated from the specification, your catalog, the purchasing list from the previous ship, and these are populated through your parametric estimation. 
And in the administration, this is simply the management of your cost functions. These are the equations that, of course, you can go and change for yourself. And the parameters in the equations are something that you decide on. It comes with a default set of uh, equations. But then you're going to end up and find your coefficients and find your numbers. This is where your experience and the manpower comes in. It's not just a black box. The nice thing that uh, COSFAC offers is the ability to track things uh, graphically. It's a bit like uh, having curves, but this is, uh, is nicely uh, visible where you have uh, a target, which is your evaluation, and where do you sit compared to your uh, evaluation. But it also gives an idea of how much of the information you have populated. So you always keep track of what you have and what is missing. And finally, finally the, uh, to the cost uh, impact, this is uh, change management, if you may. What happens if I make a certain change? Am I going to uh, have a, a better or worse cost? And where is it going to happen? And also, this is a manager for change that comes from the outside. Something has changed in the ship constructor project. I have, we're going to talk about this later, my in a asynchronous, asynchronous uh, 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 data exchange model. Uh, I, I perceive that there is a change, and so I'm going to bring it up uh, in the interface. Oops. Sorry. There we go. And you get an eye highlight, not just an exclamation mark, an highlight, and then it asks you to uh, upgrade the project. And these are things that with uh, scripts, because we're in SQL, can also be automated. So I'll close with uh, the reference list of COSFAC today. You can see mostly uh, North uh, European, if not uh, a lot German. It's a German company. It's a spin-off, uh, kind of a spin-off from German uh, university. So it uh, kind of goes by itself that this is where it's ending and the benefits. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.